Okay, so lately I've been telling you guys to use vermiculite. It's that fool's gold kind of looking stuff that you find in either solo bags by themselves or in some cases, seed starting mixes. And it holds and retains water, but there's a garden rumor going around saying that this contains and or is asbestos. So does vermiculite contain asbestos? Is it something you should watch out for or just not use altogether? That's what we're gonna talk about here in today's video. So I love vermiculite. I find it really nice to use for flower seedlings as straight vermiculite. It works wonderfully on heat mats, even uh, distribution makes really strong roots for particularly small seeds. If you ever get white mold on the surface of your soil, vermiculite, a small little dusting of vermiculite over top can alleviate this. It's my go-to. I put that on everything. It's kind of like the, the Frank's Red Hot. So what is vermiculite? Vermiculite is, it, it's essentially a rock for the most part. And inside of that, there's trace minerals and different compounds or components. And depending on how that vermiculite was laid out and made, it will change the ratios or the components or the trace minerals that we find inside of there. Now, if you did not know, asbestos is also a form of a rock. And if you get a vermiculite layer that is somehow in some way similar or near to asbestos layers, then when the two are mined together, you get vermiculite that is contaminated with asbestos. So they don't live together necessarily. Vermiculite rock will not necessarily have asbestos every single time. So how does this stuff become like this fluffy light layer, almost accordion looking like material? Essentially vermiculite or as we like to call it, is heated to about a thousand degrees Celsius and that causes it to pop in a way. And that popping product, the product, product that has been popped, is then used in insulation, it's used for houseplant horticulture grade, you name it. There's so many different uses for vermiculite because of its light airiness. It is great for growing plants in because it mimics soil in the way when we talk about soil solution or soil in general, we always talk about soil porosity. And depending on your soil porosity, you can have different levels of cation exchange capacity or nutrient holding ability, AKA nutrient holding ability, or ability to hold water. Vermiculite is, you know, not soil, but it is really great at making sure the proper ratios are present. So how did the myth come from wherever that vermiculite has asbestos? Now, general public would not know geology or geology science to know that vermiculite ore can be next to asbestos, contaminated rock, if you will. Except for there was one mine in Montana it was called the Libby, I don't wanna get this, it was just called Libby Mine, just Libby Mine. Yes, 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 yes. Libby Mine in Montana was a vermiculite ore mine. And if you ever look at geology or a rock and you see all those layers kind of stacked up on the top of each other, they had a vermiculite layer and then they had an asbestos layer, if you will right next to each other. So when they put the ore mining machinery to work, it chewed up bits and bobs of that asbestos contaminated layer and mixed it in with the vermiculite. And this mine operated somewhere from, I believe it was like 1950 to 1990s. And it even more specifically, the product that came from Libby Mine was called Xenolite, so Z-E-N-O-L-I-T-E, -E, and it was used for potting, horticulture, and it was used for insulation. It was used for both. The, again, the name brand was Xenolite. Turns out, when we started realizing asbestos is not great, we started testing different components such as vermiculite, which can be an ore that can be contaminated to look and see if there was asbestos in it. And this mine 
the asbestos layer is real darn close to the vermiculite layer and it was most definitely getting mixed together. So they shut that mine down. They shut it down in the 90s. And ever since then, there is rigorous testing, both the American and the Canadian side. I'm confident that this testing extends to the UK and Australia because asbestos is known internationally as not being a great thing for anybody. Um, so I'm sure that everyone's tested. And not only is the mine in which it's being mined from being tested, but the products, the consumer products that you purchase are also tested once again. So it's going through multiple layers. And whenever we find vermiculite or an asbestos layer near vermiculite, it's just, you don't, you don't mine it. It's not mineable. It's a resource that has to stay in the ground and you can't get a hold of it. So the, I guess the takeaway from that is that if you were using vermiculite in the eighties and the early nineties, you probably were at risk of using a vermiculite for horticulture that may or may not have asbestos, but it was only from one mine. So you would have to get that Xenolite brand for it even to have that. Now, fast forward, I mean, 30 odd years, unless you've got like a really old bag of vermiculite and it's from the nineties and it's like hanging out in the shed, you're gonna be okay. If you have a, a, a vermiculite bag from the nineties, give it to your museum. I don't know, don't use it, just throw it away. So today's day and age, that is not the case. You, you're not gonna have this issue. However, and this is a however for regardless of what you're doing when it comes to anything, horticulture, soil, soilless, peat, vermiculite, perlite, whatever. Small particulates that come off of clay soil or vermiculite or perlite or pumice, anything, is damaging to your lungs. None of that is good. All of that is very difficult to get out. And most of that, except for like peat and compost, of course, are inorganic materials. They're all basically rock of some sort going into your lungs. And it's not gonna decompose and it's gonna, it's gonna sit there. It's gonna stay there if it gets in. So what you wanna do if you're sensitive is to wear a mask of some sort um, to make sure that you're not breathing this in. And if you're kinda like me <laughs> and you're like, whatever, I'm young and uh, I'll regret all my decisions when I'm old, I already know that. You could just wet it, so wet it down and that in and of itself will stop the dust and the particular kind of poofing up. So if you ever like dump a bag of soil and you're like, Whoa, that's, that's dusty. Put water on it, just for your lungs, put water on it. And soil, same thing. If you're in the garden and it's dusty and there's blowing uh, wind, I mean, don't inhale it. It's none of it's good. And that is actually what the Canadian Occupational Health and Safety Division says to do if you're handling vermiculite. I love your guys' questions and your statements about vermiculite. Let me know in the comments down below if you use vermiculite. Everyone I've told, and I've been trying to push this for like years now, <laughs> but people have finally adopted this and they'll tell you in the comments down below, it's life-changing how it, it the mold that issue disappears. Algae, which is kind of whatever, but that also disappears. And then if you have troubles germinating small seeds or seeds that you know need quite a bit of heat or are, are sensitive to rot, vermiculite, start them in straight vermiculite. Swear to goodness, it is like a miracle product. I love it. So do keep that in mind. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thumbs up comment down below and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna join the Geek Crew, we are an awesome group of very nerdy garden people and you will not regret it, I promise. None of, all of us are nice. I have red hair, so I mean, but the rest of them are, they're cool. <laughs> Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time, bye. I'm just gonna tell them it was you. They love you, by the way. All the women are jealous. They say they want coffee deliveries like that. Sure, sexy. <laughs> I bet it is.